Welcome to the Thrive Today podcast. I'm Natalie Bourne. I'm the media host for Thrive Today and the founder of Innovation Meets Leadership. We are a podcast for women who lead and believe. And today we are sitting down with our founder of Thrive Today, Colleen Rouse. She's also the founding pastor of Victory Church in Atlanta, Georgia. And I'm so excited because we are going to be talking about a really, really interesting topic today. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. I am so looking forward to diving into this. This is going to be good. Yeah. So, you know, I want to say we were having a conversation, um, gosh, it was a couple weeks ago, and we were talking about what we want it to be known for. You you were kind of leaning into this idea of intentionality. So, you know, as we think about our own leadership, typically we focus on how we're being treated, but we don't actually think about how we're showing up, what is the essence of what it's like to be around us as a leader, and what do we want to be known for? And I was curious, what even sparked that conversation for you in the first place? Well, you know, you know, as usual, the Lord just kind of caught me in the act of, of doing that very thing. I'm in a grocery store. I'm putting my things on the conveyor belt, right, to be. And the girl didn't even acknowledge me. I mean, obviously, she was having a bad day. And immediately, where did my mind go? Because, you know, if you've been in sales and service, you are you are sensitive to those things, right? And I'm thinking... This is not right. She is not saying hello to me. And and the Lord said, why don't you flip that narrative? Why don't you reach out to her? And we have this expectation when we go into a restaurant, we sit down, we have an expectation of them that we miss the opportunity right. to add value, to take, you know, this whole thing around intentionality, it's 24 seven, right? Or at least while we're awake, yes, that we are living with a sense of understanding the responsibility and with that, the power. Yes. I mean, the Bible says, buy up every opportunity because the days are evil. Mm -hmm. I think what that is alluding to is you have moments to make, to make someone else feel valuable, to add value to them. Are you seeing them and are you seizing them? Well, I wonder then, how do we take that concept, which when you put it that way, it's a pretty difficult concept for us to apply 24-7, or at least when we're awake. But like, how do you apply that then into leadership? When you think about our own leadership style, what we bring to the table, what it's like to be around us, how do we apply that concept there? Well, if there's one thing that we are looking for in the workplace, it's a sense of loyalty. You know, right now we're looking at people, employee turnover, quiet quitting, all of this. And we have to start asking ourselves, what can we do to slow that down? Right. And one of the things that creates loyalty is when someone feels valued and safe. Yes. Now, what can we do when I talk about safety, safety to be who they are, the safety to be able to take risk without getting reamed out. Yes. The safety to know that someone sees the best in them and will not speak against them. Wow. So those are the things that I think we need to be cognizant of because there's great payoff when we are careful with our tongue mm -hmm. about the way we talk to an employee and the way we talk about an employee or an upline. Wow. Well, when you said talk about, you know, it makes me realize that so often we get sucked into these conversations sometimes knowingly or unknowingly, right? Whether you've been saved for five years or five months, we as a believer can even find ourselves right in the center of these conversations that become very negative, very fast. They start to spiral out of control. Yeah. And typically if there's no one in the room to uh, fight for that person or, or vouch for that person, the conversation just goes downhill fast. What do we do? Like, what's our response in these moments? It does. It's like you get sucked into the vortex. I mean, you step into any break room mm -hmm. across America and what's going on? Conversations are being had. And if the an, an employee's name comes up, more than likely, wh which way do you think that conversation is going to go about them? Positive or negative? Most likely it's a negative. And here's the other thing about leadership. Sometimes we feel like the onus is upon us to warn people about certain people. You know what that's called? Gossip. Flat out <laughs> gossip. And, and we can't be engaged in that because here's what here's what will happen. If we speak negatively about someone, and even if we feel justified in doing so, then those people that we speak to, they think if they speak this way about them, what are they saying about me? Again, back to the thing of safety. 
you just created yeah. confusion yeah. and insecurity mm -hmm. in that team of people. The other thing is there's a very good chance that will get back to them. Oh, my goodness. And so there's yes. your credibility. Right? Well, I'll have to jump in here because I had a situation happen. Uh, not It was probably several years ago, but um, the person actually took what was said and forwarded it. And so often we don't realize that, you know, you think you're in a private conversation on someone's text channel, but sometimes they'll take that information and forward it. And now you're reading what that person thinks. And so, you know, it's so important for us to slow communication down and say, okay, if this person was to see this text, Absolutely. how would they feel about it? And so, so often we just kind of, you know, we're in a rush, we're hurrying, might be voice to texting. You just send the thing off and you don't think about it again. When that person sees the text, now they feel a certain way about you because they're sitting there reading what you wrote about them. Yeah. So how often do we just kind of miss this moment to be kind at all times, even if we may be in a different light of what we agree with, right? What this other person has done or said or whatever. I think that we, we're we moving too fast. Absolutely. And I think this intentionality, what it brings about is we need to slow down. Yeah, that's a really good question. Because when you think about it, there is a little bit of complexity here for us as believers, because we know that sometimes the way that we're perceived mm -hmm. is because somebody is not by someone who's not a believer in Christ. We can't really change that, right? Mm -hmm. So there are things that you can control and things that you can't control. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of like this, you know, it's, it's almost like we have more control o over our brand than we do our reputation, you know? Wow. Because the brand is built on how you put yourself out there. It's curated, yeah. right? Yeah. And But you can't curate an experience. And so your reputation is often built on how people experience you. So there is a realm of control that you have because you can control how you're treating other people. Right. You can't control their perception. They may walk away and you're thinking, how in the world did you get that out of our conversation? So... Where we have control, that's what we focus on. Where we don't have control, we don't get an angst about it because God is the one who is going to defend and bring truth to the light. And I know what it's like to undergo, I won't call it a character assassination, but it was kind of close to it. And, and there was a period of time. And of course, things are coming back to me. Things are being said about me. And I mean, obviously, if you're a person of character, that's valuable to you. And you want to rise up and defend your character because a, being a person of character is important. And that's what we have to resist. Yeah. And and First Peter 2.24 talks about when Jesus was reviled, he did not revile in return. Wow. But it says something really important. There's a place that he went to. Right. It says he entrusted himself in the hands of him. Who judges righteously. And I remember reading that in that moment and saying, you know what? I'm firing myself as the judge because I don't judge. Right. I'm going to fire myself from that position. I'm hiring you. And that's where I'm going to go. And so I experienced the whole thing of him being our refuge and our strength. He is both, right? So as long as you let him be your refuge, he gives you the strength to endure. And in that season, you know, I just I just said, you know what, Lord, you're going to bring the truth to the light. Right. And I'm just trusting that you will do that. And there, now I will say that there are times when it's good to approach another individual yeah. because you do want to make a, amends. You do want to extend an olive branch. And if you find out where something is directly said about you and you want to confront it, you should mm -hmm. and talk to them and say, you know what, it's come to my attention that perhaps you said something to the effect or you believe something about me. Can we talk about this? Because I want it to hear from you. I want us to have a conversation about it. And you can, you know, put that fire out by doing so. Yeah. What I love about what you're saying is, you know, feedback is a gift. It is. Even if sometimes we don't like the feedback. And so going direct to the person and having that conversation, it opens up so much intentionality. We talked about yeah. intention. Yeah. And so to me, um, it would be easy to go tell 10 people how you don't like what that person said about you. That's easy. Or we can go talk to the one person that said it and find out what is behind that, right? What was the undercurrent behind what you said? What was the reasoning behind what you 
what you mentioned or you said. And then let's talk through that so that we can leave on the same page. And, and in that way, feedback is a gift because it opens up dialogue and it opens up conversations. We may not like what's being said about us, and it may not even be true. Yeah. But the ability to go to the person opens up a world of possibility. It does. And I think we go for the ideal. Mm -hmm. The optimal result would be reconciliation. Absolutely. So I'm not just going into that, this conversation, to repair my reputation. Right. I'm going to shoot a little higher than that because then God has to get involved, right? <laughs> when we shoot that high, okay, Lord, I want reconciliation. That's what he wants. And so when we go in with that, in order to do that, understanding is important. And that's why you have to listen. Right. So the feedback is valuable because even as you're listening, you're listening to what the person is saying, and then you're listening to what the Lord is saying about this because he is going to lend truth mm -hmm. to their comments. Wow. Wow. This has been this has been so good. I would I would wonder what final thoughts would you have for our listeners if they're listening to this and saying, I'm in the middle of a situation like this right now. Wow. And you know what? I would say, first of all, it's not going to last forever, mm -hmm. even though it feels like an eternity. It's not going to last an eternity. And God is a God mm -hmm. who redeems our life from destruction. And he gives us beauty for ashes. So I would say, first of all, I would put my mind around those things. I would remind myself of God's redemptive ability. I would pray for favor because he gives us favor yes. even with our enemies. Yeah. And I would begin to enact the things that he says. He tells us to bless those who curse us. Yeah. So pray for those who despitefully use us. I would pull on the truth of the word of God. I would pull out the sword of the spirit to begin enacting my power and stepping into my place of authority in the situation. We don't wrestle yeah. with flesh and blood, right? It is it is a spiritual battle. And so with that understanding, there are things that we would just have to do on the daily. So if you are in a season of this and it seems like it's going to have some duration to it, um, I would say that you have to arm yourself with truth every day. Yeah. And the most important thing, when I was in that season and it looked like there, it was going to have some duration to it, I said, okay, Lord, I have to make a decision here. And that is that I'm going to go through this as a student and not a victim. Yeah. And that was helpful to me because I thought, what better way to slap the enemy in the face? And I'm sorry, I do <laughs> like to do that. <laughs> what better way to do that than to learn yeah so that I can help somebody else in the future. So use this as a time to learn. Get the God takeaways from this and don't listen to the whispers of the enemy. And then write things down. Find your scriptures that you can live on. Those will be life for you. They will be bread for you. They will nourish you, nourish your soul when you are stinging from hurt and accusation. And in the process, you're going to be able to help somebody else that's going through it. And that's where the redemption part comes in because now you have the power to take what you've learned and multiply it. And that is sweet. Yeah. That's so impactful. And I just want to say that this has been such an enjoyable conversation today. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time. Absolutely. As always. Yes. Well, ladies, um, let me ask you a question. What are you waiting for in terms of getting into community? We have an amazing, incredible community that is growing day by day over at thrivetoday.com. Not only will you have access to monthly coaching calls with Colleen and myself, but you'll also have access to so, so much more in the arsenal that we have for you in your leadership journey. So we want you to head over to thrivetoday.com to get involved with what we're doing. Click on membership to learn more and don't forget to thrive. We'll see you next time.